I felt goosebumps on my skin as I climbed the seemingly endless flight of stairs. I was cursing myself for this stupid idea. There were definitely better ways to surprise my girlfriend, but it was her birthday and she did adore horror movies. That's why I decided to prepare a surprise candlelight dinner in a creepy, abandoned hospital at night. As soon as I stepped onto the third floor, the door closed behind me with a bang. And that should have been my first warning to give up on this ridiculous idea because things were about to get real crazy. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to protect yourself from getting into crazy situations. I pushed the door to check if I was locked in, but thankfully I wasn't. With shaking hands, I messaged Taylor. Hey babe, I'm waiting. Winky face. I suddenly panicked. Damn it, no! I'd sent it to my boyfriend, Oliver, instead. I immediately unsent it and sent Taylor another message. Hopefully, Oliver hadn't seen it. Suddenly, I heard footsteps approaching. I called out. Babe? Taylor? Is anyone here? Just then, someone tapped on my shoulder, and I almost passed out. I heard laughter. Taylor? I yelled. Babe, don't do that. You nearly scared me to death. She answered. And who told you about this venue? I told her that I thought she'd love it, but... Then she caressed my cheek and said, I do, but you don't. My heart fluttered. My girlfriend was such a stud. Just as we sat down to eat, we heard a blood-curdling scream. Taylor got up and dashed out of the room to check it out, and I followed. We went into a room at the end of the hall, and we saw a guy looking out the window. Thinking it was a ghost, I hid behind Taylor. She called to him. Uh, who are you? What do you want? The guy replied, my phone. I dropped my phone. Damn it. I gasped. His voice sounded familiar. Oh no, it couldn't be. But then he turned, and I almost wanted to jump out of the window myself. It was Oliver, I asked. What are you doing here? He replied. You told me to come. The blood drained from my face as Taylor turned to me. Thankfully, everyone was suddenly distracted when Oliver said, We have one little problem, guys. We're stuck. Taylor shouted. What do you mean we're stuck? Panicking, I ran outside to check the door, but it wouldn't open this time. I pushed even harder, but it wouldn't budge. The elevator wasn't working anymore, and the other fire exit door was locked as well. When I got back, Oliver and Taylor were staring at each other. I swear the tension between them was so strong, I could feel it in the air. And at that moment, I realized that my worst nightmare had come true. I was stuck in the creepiest place possible with my girlfriend and boyfriend. I yelled, we have to get out of here. Taylor said, the door opened easily when I came in. Someone must have locked it accidentally. Oliver snapped back. Why are you looking at me like that? Taylor replied, I don't know. You tell me. Jeez, I had to do something before they killed each other. I pulled Oliver into a corner and explained, babe, that's Taylor. She's my cousin. She doesn't know that I have a boyfriend, so be cool. You're my other cousin. Get it? He took out a piece of paper and pushed it into my pocket saying, read it later, babe. I then pulled Taylor into another room. She said, ooh, this is hot, babe, and pushed me against the wall to kiss me. I said, babe, that's Oliver. He's my cousin and he's staying with us at the moment. I don't know why he turned up here. He doesn't know that I'm into girls, so be cool. You're my other cousin. Get it? She replied, okay, whatever. Don't know why, but something about that guy is super familiar. I quickly said, I'm sure you don't know him. He's not from around here. Let's go. We started looking around to see if we could find a way out. Taylor's phone was in her bag, which was on her motorcycle outside, and Oliver had dropped his, so our only chance was my phone. I tried dialing 911, but of course, there was no signal. They were both holding onto my shirt as I led the way back to the room where Taylor and I had been on our date. Just then, Taylor picked up something from the floor. It was the little love note that Oliver had slipped into my pocket. She looked at me and then at Oliver and said, Kendra, who gave this to you? Before I could reply, Oliver jumped in and said, What's it to you, huh? But out of her personal business, will you? Taylor looked furious, and I did the only thing that I could think of and said, It wasn't mine. You know I think these notes are stupid. Then I took it from her and tossed it away. I turned to the window and started screaming for help but no one seemed to be in the area. Taylor suggested we gather the bed sheets, tie them together to make a rope, and use it to climb down from the window. But Oliver immediately rejected her idea. How are you so dumb? It's too risky. We're on the third freaking floor. Don't you girls have any hairpins? I could try opening the lock with one. Taylor turned to him. 
No, Nancy Drew, we don't. And I don't think that would help anyway. My idea is much better. As they continued to argue, I climbed up on a stool, hoping to get some phone signal. We needed to get out of here tonight before they found out I was dating both of them. Suddenly, I lost my balance and slipped. Luckily, I landed in Oliver's arms. He looked so handsome, and his strong arms always made me feel safe. He said, Easy there, babe. He was about to lean in for a kiss when we heard Taylor clear her throat. She sarcastically said, How I wish I had a sweet cousin like him, before walking away. She looked angry and jealous. As I ran after her, I tripped over something and fell forward and straight into her. She cried as she lost her balance and we both fell to the floor. Her body felt so soft and she smelled really good. Our lips were so close as I stared at her pretty face. She was about to reach for my lips to kiss me when we saw Oliver glaring down at us. He said, We shouldn't be messing around, girls. Get up and move. Ugh, I found them both so attractive in different ways. It was so confusing. Maybe this was my chance to finally decide between them. Suddenly, Oliver came up to me and said, I think your cousin has a crush on me. She keeps checking me out. I wanted to laugh, but then Taylor said the same thing about him. They thought jealousy was interest. For some reason, that pissed me off. Clearly, it was only me anyone liked. It was past midnight already, and Oliver suggested we wait until morning to find help. I thought it was a great idea. The less we talked, the less likely it was that they'd find out my little secret. But Taylor seemed agitated. I started dusting a bed off when Taylor said she didn't want to sleep in a room with a boy. She said, I just wanted to have a girly time with Kendra tonight. We have lots of catching up to do. Oliver said, fine, I'll sleep in the next room then. In bed, Taylor hugged me from behind and said, well, I can't complain. I like how it's turning out. But I couldn't help worrying about Oliver. He only had one candle with him. Moments later, I noticed a blood stain on the bed and started freaking out. My period had started. Taylor said she had me covered and gave me a tampon. My girl was a lifesaver. I gave her a quick kiss. When I came back, she hugged me again. But Oliver being alone kept bothering me. I suggested that we move to his room. I said, he's kind of a wimp. He might be scared. Taylor answered, are you kidding me? I said, Oliver is my cousin. He's my responsibility. We have to stick together. Oliver slept on a couch across the room and Taylor and I on the bed. Taylor had already fallen asleep. While I kept imagining shadows and whatnot dancing around the room, what if the ghost of a dead patient suddenly lay down beside me? I caught Oliver's attention and signaled him to sleep on my other side. He slid under the cover with me. My heartbeat started to race when I felt his hand holding mine. It felt weird to be sandwiched between them, but for some reason, it felt exciting. Suddenly, a loud rustling noise in the hallway made us all jump to our feet. Oliver asked, What was that? Taylor answered him, I don't know. Why don't you check it out since you're the guy here? Using a candle, Taylor and I followed Oliver out of the room. We saw a lot of emergency things scattered on the floor. I screamed when a huge rat suddenly ran out in front of us. When I turned to them, I almost laughed when I saw them hugging each other tightly in fear. They took like 10 steps apart when they realized that it wasn't me they were hugging. Oliver said, Sorry about that. I thought you were my cousin. Taylor answered, It's, uh, it's not a big deal. We couldn't fall back asleep after that and just sat in silence. Man, this was getting uncomfortable. I spotted an empty bottle in the corner. I shouted, let's play truth or dare. We sat down on the floor and Oliver spun the bottle. It landed on me. Oliver smirked and said, okay, Kendra, I dare you to kiss Taylor. I looked at him in shock. Was this some kind of test? I laughed and said, that's gross, Oliver. She's my cousin. Taylor looked pissed when I said that. She said, oh, well, I guess the only two people who aren't cousins here are me and Oliver and she suddenly crawled over to him, pulled him towards her by the collar, and kissed him. Oliver looked really surprised and turned red. I was so angry, but it's not like I could say anything. Thankfully, it was morning now, and everything had started to brighten up. We looked like a bunch of zombies. I checked my phone and was horrified to see that my battery had totally drained. We followed Taylor to the laboratory room and saw some chemicals spilled on the floor. Oliver slipped, but before falling, Taylor was able to catch him. She told him, Watch your step, dude. Oliver looked up at her. 
and seeing how they were staring into each other's eyes made me feel like I had been stabbed through the chest. I was jealous, but I didn't know of who. I pushed them apart and said, come on, let's get to work. I don't want to be stuck here forever. We found some jars and test tubes with scary looking things inside. Taylor explained what they were with confidence, and Oliver looked oh so fascinated. He said, wow, that sounds so cool. Taylor replied, my dad's a surgeon. That's why I know these things. Oliver just stared at her, and Taylor looked like she was enjoying it. Suddenly, Taylor said, I'm so cold. I started taking off my jacket, but she said she didn't want me to catch a cold, so she went to our room and got into bed. Oliver went in after her and put his jacket around her shoulders. Taylor must have thought it was me because she said, I love you, babe. But Oliver just turned red, and when Taylor saw who it was, she blushed too. Ugh, it was so annoying. I had to get their attention back. I walked away and tripped on purpose. Acting like I had a sprain, I shouted for help. But no one came. I was furious. I marched back to the laboratory room and my jaw dropped in horror at what I saw. My boyfriend and girlfriend were kissing. I screamed. What the hell? I hate you both. Both of them looked so shocked as they stepped away from each other. Taylor said, what did you say, babe? I told her Oliver was mine. Oliver asked, did you just call her babe too? I answered, yes, because she's my girlfriend. She's mine. All of a sudden, I realized what I'd done, but it was too late because they both looked furious. Now what? I immediately walked out and looked for a corner to cry in. A few hours had passed and my stomach growled. I realized that we hadn't eaten for more than 12 hours. I found them in our room eating the leftovers from last night. My anger flared. Oliver feeding Taylor with his own hands. The freaking traitors. They were officially together now? I complained that no one had even asked me for food. And Oliver said, But I thought you were on a diet. Taylor repeated him, Yeah, I thought you were on a diet. I told her to stay out of this and she replied, Or what? You'll cheat on me? For a minute, the whole room was absolutely silent. But the tension was killing me. I chose to walk away again or I'd go crazy. Nighttime came again, and I was so pissed. I spent another hour screaming for help, even though I knew it was useless. When it was time to sleep, I went to join them, wondering what the sleeping arrangement would be tonight. I'd probably be the one on the couch now. I noticed that Taylor was missing. I asked Oliver where she was, and he told me that he had been looking for her too. Oliver tried to hold my hand as we checked each room, but I smacked it away. How dare he? He had kissed my girlfriend and it was unforgivable. He then told me that he didn't trust Taylor. I think she already escaped and left us here. We should get out already. I was annoyed. How could he think about Taylor like that? I said, you seem to find her just fine when you were kissing her. Just then, he looked out the window and yelled, see, I told you. He showed me a rope made of bedsheets hanging from the window. He said we could try going down that way too, but I hesitated because I saw her motorcycle still parked outside. I said, uh, that looks like a really steep drop. Let's try to find another way. My stomach growled again. Oliver grabbed my hand and pulled me to the back of the nurse's station. I was surprised when he took out some snacks and water bottles from a drawer. He said, if you want to stay here, it's fine. We have everything we need. I said, of course I don't want to stay here. And where did this food come from? Oliver said, I don't know, babe. It was just here. I thought you probably brought it for your date. And look how she's left you now. We lay down to sleep. Just as I had dozed off, I woke up in shock. I'd heard a phone ring. Was I imagining stuff? Something just wasn't right. I tried to open the huge door at the end of the hallway again. And unexpectedly, it opened this time. I went inside and heard another ring, then a moan. I followed the sound and was shocked to see Taylor tied up to a surgical bed and next to her was a phone. I immediately ran up to her to untie her and grab the phone. We had to call for help. She revealed, that creep planned all of this. I remembered how I knew him. I used to date his sister and he tried hitting on me back then. He found out I was going out with you. He wanted to get rid of me by trapping me in here. What? Panicking. I looked around and saw a fire extinguisher under the sink and used it to hit the metal lock bar on the fire exit door. We tried and tried until it opened. Finally, while Taylor and I were running down the stairs, Oliver screamed from the top. 
Bring her back to me, you stupid witch. He started to run after us, but in a panic, Taylor suddenly tripped. I helped her get up, but Oliver was able to catch up and grabbed me by my shirt. He yelled. She never even noticed me and used to make fun of me with my sister. And now she's trying to steal my girlfriend. When you texted me by mistake, you gave me the perfect chance to set things straight. You're mine, Kendra. You can't be hers. He was about to pull me back, shaking Taylor off. Then suddenly, we heard sirens. The police had come. Oliver looked horrified. And then he was off. He ran down the stairs and out of the door. For a minute, I was scared he'd gotten away. But just then, two policemen came into sight, and they grabbed him. We ran downstairs and told them everything. To say he'll be behind bars for a long time is an understatement. My parents would be worried sick, so Taylor drove me home next. Before going inside, I invited her to spend the night with me. But to my surprise, she shook her head and said, I really loved you, Kendra, but I need time to think about us. Tears rolled down my cheeks. What do you mean? Are you breaking up with me? But Taylor just left. Over the following weeks, I realized how unfair I had been to Taylor. She had always loved me and been strong for me, and all I had done was cheat on her. Now, she didn't even want to talk to me. Until one day, when the doorbell rang. When I went to check, someone stood at the back door with a huge bouquet of flowers. For a minute, I was terrified. Was Oliver somehow back? But then, the person holding the flowers peeked at me from behind them. Taylor! I... I, I'm I'm so, so sorry. I was crazy, and I just got carried away, but I, I... I love you, Kay. Even after everything. I love you. I love you, too.